Hobsa channel 88. You can also catch us on Facebook Live at Revelation TV Zambia. You can also participate on our program at 0974 146 118. So this time we are doing it different. We are going to be talking to somebody who is an expert in conservation farming. He goes by the name of Dr. Wulaya Oliver. He's, uh, we will allow him to introduce himself and then we will get to know him with the course of the interview. Good evening and welcome to the Good program. Good evening, Hope. Uh, thank you so much for your invitation. So for those of us that do not know, who is Dr. Wulaya Oliver? Um, Dr. Wulaya Oliver is... Um, 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 a, a field um, uh, uh, regional deputy uh, manager, you know, former deputy regional manager for conservation unity. And this is an organization that I've served for about uh, 15 years. You know, I've been so much passionate about uh, conservation um, farming promotion in Zambia. As you've seen, I've uh, some articles running in various uh, newspapers, um, on radio station. And um, also today I'm privileged to be here, you know, to share the information concerning conservation farming and effects of uh, conservation, um, uh, I mean, climate change in Zambia. No, you are always welcome to our studio. So for those of us that don't know, I know we have different types of farming. We yes. have agri, piggery. Mm. So maybe for, that, for those of us that do not know, what is conservation farming? Thank you so much, uh, Hope. Um, in a nutshell, you know, conservation farming is a kind of farming that is resilient, you know, to climate change. You know, when we are talking about uh, climate change, we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, variances, you know, in the solar cycle or system and uh, also, you know, causing the global warming and or global heat that uh, we are experiencing this time around. So, as you are aware, we've been uh, so much experienced in, with the conventional kind of tillage, and this is what is uh, most of the people are so much uh, conversant with in terms of plowing, you know, uh, uh, over digging, and so on and so forth. So now, when we are talking about conservation farming, this is a technology that is responding to climate change. And uh, it entails, you know... Sorry, sorry to cut you short, Dr. Yes. Wulai. I know you have used very big terminology, <laughs> but... Uh, tell it to us, is if we're Mazambians, when yes. you say conservation, yes. talk to us in simple terms, in simple the way terms. we will understand it. Oh yes, so when we are talking about the conservation, we are talking about preserving land. Yes, preserving land. You know, you may know, you know, to say in Genesis, when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them a responsibility to tend land, to take care of land. And this is the responsibility every one of us, you know, has to ensure that um, we take care of land. So when we are talking about cons conserving land or conservation farming, we are talking about um, technologies that conserve land for a longer, you know, uh, term so that even the future generation will be able to use the same particular so land. So when you, when you talk about uh, conservation, mm. does this uh, involve the Chitamine system? Um, where they, they maybe they refuse us, uh, they say no cutting of trees, no picking of charcoal, is that part yeah. of conservation? Uh, thank you so much, Hope. That is um, uh, what we are against because that is part of conventional kind of farming. Because for conventional, we are referring to farmers that uh, uh, plow. Well, you understand? Plow. They use a plow to prepare their land on the onset of the rains, or all those that use um, hose, you know, to reach up you know, to reach up or, you know, overall digging and so on. That is what is referred to as conventional. And usually that kind of technology, this is where they do the burning now. Because for them to prepare land, they have to do the burning. And, you know, that burning is what is, you know, exasperating, you know, the situation of climate change. Because it releases, you know, what we call, you know, carbon emission and so mm -hmm. on. And uh, causing us to have the situation that we have now in terms of uh, um, uh, the phenomenon of uh, uh, climate uh, change. I remember, I think if it's, if it's not a few, a few months ago, yes. uh, a few years back, uh, I, I think government, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me, they said there will be no burning of charcoal until a certain period of time. Mm, so mm. do you think Zambia can survive that type of uh, strict regulation and rules? Um, you know, this is, it has to be regulated. You know, indefinite cutting of trees, uh, hope, is, is a very serious um, kind of a situation. 
Let me give an example. When we are talking about climate change, it's not a, a, a small kind of a thing. You know, this is where we have now situations of um, a rising of sea levels, where we have floods all over. And, you know, this is affecting, you know, the climate, I mean, the, the farming uh, business here, you know, in Zambia and even across, you know, the, the globe. So now when the government comes, um, uh, 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 comes up, you know, with policies to restrict you know, the kind of, um, you know, charcoal, you know, um, uh, business, so that uh, they cut off, you know, so many people cutting trees anyhow, you know, that is the right way, you know, to do it, because people are cutting trees. And but do you think our economy as mm. a whole can survive this type of uh, strict regulation and rules, where we solely depend on charcoal to say, do you think we can survive? Um, hope. We have a lot of technologies that are coming on board. And uh, these technologies, if I refer to it as climate smart, you understand? Climate smart, where farmers or any other person should, should diversify the way of doing things. Because um, this issue, uh, hope, has to do with the mind, mindset change. We need to change the way of doing things. And the way we are looking at this situ but, situation. But sorry to cut you short. Mm. Look at me, Dr. Blair, mm. right? Um, a lady, mm. a married lady, mm. I have children, mm. I buy electricity, mm. units are high, Nashta mm. Malasha, Ndea Am I wrong? No. Not everybody will understand when you say climate smart. Yes. So my question is do you think Zambia can survive this type of rules and regulation of climate smart? We can, we can, because um, as I mentioned, this is a very serious phenomenon. And if we don't take up measures now, our future generation will be doomed. So hope we shouldn't look at us now. Let's look at the future generation. Where are we going? If this time around we have uh, global heating like it is in the winter, we're supposed to have a cool, cold, you know, um, environment. Then we have higher temperatures like we're experiencing now. This time around, we're experiencing flooding. You know, these are things that we're hearing far off, you know, from uh, Africa, far off, you know, from our country, Zambia. But they've come to where we are now. So we need to take measures seriously to ensure that we keep this um, 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 exasperation of uh, uh, climate uh, uh, change. So the government, through the forestry department, they have measures they've taken there to guide whoever is involved in um, charcoal burning so that we preserve even our our forest you know we preserve our forest because this forest they help us you know to bring the rains that we are talking okay, about okay before before mm. we go too deep into that i'll just yeah. bring you back mm. um where we came to what is conservation farming mm. and then we went too deep um, oh yes so i'll just bring you back to the second question which is um how does this type of farming um help economies like ours go yes this is a very good way. Like I mentioned earlier on, it is a resilient kind of farming. So resilient, it is counteracting the conventional kind of farming, the plow, plowing, the conventional kind of farming that we are used to for all these years. Um, Hope, one thing that you may know is that um, when farmers are preparing land, they pre start preparing land in terms of conventional kind of tillage. I'm giving you an example so that you understand where we are coming from. So they will start uh, 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 um, on the onset of the rain, you know, to do the plowing and to prepare land, you know, for farming and so on. But what we are saying now in the conservation farming is that a farmer shouldn't do that now. Because climate change has come with it, changes in temperatures and changes in seasons. You understand? But that's the farmer's sole livelihood or mm -hmm. that's the farmer's sole support. Mm -hmm. So what should I do if I'm going to burn trees and make charcoal for me to sell and support my family? Mm -hmm. What should I do? There are alternatives. And these alternatives that we are, we are talking about now, in fact, there are so many other organizations that are involved with forestry and providing, you know, way you know, of, of um, a means, you know, of providing sustainability to farmers within those um, uh, catchment areas. We have um, biocarbony. Biocarbon is involved in preserving the forest and so on and ensuring that um, uh, people around those areas um, are, are given other alternatives. Like farmers, you know, burning charcoal is not the only business that um, uh, people can do. You know, there are other alternatives. Like I'm talking about now promoting the conservation kind of tillage because farm 
farming is business as well. So our farmers should change, you know, the mindset and ensure that um, they get involved into conservation farming where they start preparing land early. A small portion that they have, you know, there is no need of them, you know, cutting, you know, uh, trees and, and going for bigger hectares unless those that are going into mechanizations because they want to uh, uh, increase in terms of productivity. Yes, but for small holder farmers, within um, hope, a small portion, a, a one hectare, two lemurs and so on, they will be able to have enough food because they will concentrate all the effort in terms of minimum tillage other than a conventional kind of farming. Opening up furrows using reapers, tractor drone reapers or ox um, uh, drone reapers or making basins, imigoti, imifolo, you know, these are specified, you know, basins where we train our farmers how to do it so that uh, they get involved into this kind uh, of farming. I know you spoke about uh, uh, biocarbon. Uh, biocarbon, yes. Biocarbon. But uh, how much is our population or the ordinary Zambian like Hope and Sonda, how much am I educated on this type of farming? Yes, we, we, we thank you so much for that question because when we are looking at these um, um, organizations that are promoting this kind of uh, tillage or the alternative you know, kind of farming that is opposed to conventional kind of farming, that is wastage because there are so many resources that are wastage in terms of time, in terms of inputs that are always on the higher side. So we have organizations like Conservation Farming Unity. It's been in Zambia since 1996, you know, promoting this kind of technology. We have also other organizations like World Vision, they have a livelihood department. And apart from that, um, many others, we have also the Ministry, you know, of um, uh, Agriculture, you know, the Government Department, Ministry of Agriculture also spearheading this kind of uh, promotion because it's a national agenda. It's a national thing. Every one of us has to be involved. But when you look at uh, these um, organizations, they are not everywhere because they are funded. You know, for example, Conservation Farming Unit has worked on in northwestern pro I mean, in northwestern province. West Why has West it only Western? worked in that province? Western province, uh, eastern province, and southern province, and and uh, central province. Four provinces. Why? Four, four provinces? provinces, because this the, the funded program. You understand? It's the funded program. It has to do with the budget. You know, we were funded, um, uh, for example, from 2016 to 2021 by the, the, the British government through FCDO, formerly um, uh, 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 FCDO and so on, so uh, formerly DFID. So now, the funding could only take that much, you understand. So this is why we need these innovations and ensuring that, um, you know, we raise our own, you know, um, uh, models of supporting, you know, our own innovations and, uh, and uh, ensure that uh, every farmer throughout Zambia, you know, is um, uh, taught on this uh, kind of, uh, of farming. And um, thank, thank God that we have Revelation TV here, you understand, and we have so many radio programs that we are doing so that um, we train our farmers on this aspect of uh, farming. Now, let's, um, our question as the people's concern mm. is that we have 10 provinces and mm. you've only mentioned four. Mm. What's so special about the four provinces that you can go to Lusaka province, Kopebo province mm. and other provinces? Mm. What makes these four provinces special? Is it the soil type? Mm. Is it the type of living? What makes the provinces special? Um, let me say this, that um, um, for our conservation, on, on, on behalf of conservation farming, we picked on these areas looking at the severity of um, uh, climate change. When you look at this in southern part, of Zambia, you know, we look at southern province, you know, eastern Lusaka and so on, the central part of central. These areas have been badly hit in terms of uh, climate change. And somehow, northern part, you know, you talk of my area, Kaonde, I come from Sorwezi, you know, all those areas, at least, you know, we have um, uh, good rains. But what we are saying is that even in those areas where there are good rains, our farmers should take precautions. Because it happened with southern, you understand. Southern province used to feed the whole nation of Zambia. But look at it, how it's been hit badly in terms of uh, uh, climate change. So this is why we started with these areas, so that um, we, 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 we help you know, our farmers. Because this time around, you know, some time back, uh, farmers were migrating, you know, moving from one place to the other in terms of uh, looking for fertile land. You know, most of the farmers that came from north, uh, uh, southern went to northwestern, western, and many other areas looking for fertile land. But what we are saying is that they, let's help to regenerate, 
you know, the degraded soils in terms of using, you know, these technologies that, will be, uh, that are resilient, you know, to uh, climate change. That's very interesting. Now, mm -hmm. uh, coming from your past position mm -hmm. and um, to your position now, obviously, of not holding that position mm -hmm. anymore in, uh, in terms of conservation, conservation farming. farming. Yes. Yeah. Um, we, as the people's concern, just wanted to find out what has been your relationship with the past government and your gov and their government, the new dawn that we have now. Mm -hmm. um, are there any pros and cons that you uh, um, incurred with the mm -hmm. past government mm -hmm. that you're enjoying now? Mm -hmm. Or were you enjoying with the past government and now? Because everybody's talking about the new dawn. I mean, mm -hmm. yes. convers uh, conversation, conservation, con conservation farming. farming. Yes. Sorry, yes. thank you very yes. much. Shouldn't be left out. Yes. What is the relationship that you have with the past and the present mm. government. You know, um, CSU, in short, you know, conservation farming unit has been a, a, is had um, very good relationships, you know, with all the past presidents. You know, we are a private uh, organization. We started as uh, an NGO, you know, and so on. So we needed backup and support, you know, from you know every government that comes on board and so on. And I can mention here that uh, most of the programs that we had, you know, national um, a few days that we had. National meetings that we had, conventions that we had, we were backed up. You know, so this by is every with, with with the previous government. With the previous government, and for now, you know the pronouncements that um, the new Don government has mentioned in terms, of, and in fact, we have even a green economy now. You know, um, a ministry coupled up with the minister of agriculture. You know, they are um, they, they are they are they are showing that um, a kind of seriousness in terms of ensuring that uh, climate change is um, is um, one of the major you know focus in terms of promoting you know conservation farming promoting resilient methods of uh, of farming so i can um they are just new in the government and uh, the president is a farmer and most of his um, uh, members are also supporting or backing up this issue of ensuring that zambia should um, grow in terms of its product agricultural you know uh, productivity and i'm very sure that uh, yeah this will work out well even for any organizations that he is serving in the agricultural sector all right, so let's say uh, previous government, you had a good relationship. This government, you have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. And now what are some of the incentives that uh, government should do or introduce to improve this type of farming in Zambia? Yes, thank you um, uh, so much. As I mentioned earlier on, these are funded, you know, um, uh, programs. They are donor or they depend on the cooperating partners for their survive, survival and so on and so forth. So I tend to believe that... Um, I'm sorry to cut you short. Yes. You said they are donor funded. So yes. is our own government not actually involved in this type of farming? Yeah, the government is involved using the Minister of Agriculture. Uh, you understand using the minister of agriculture they are involved because even the minister of agriculture the component of scaling up conservation farming is funded you know by cooperating uh, 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 partners so i believe that um, the role the government should do and i believe this is what they are doing is to promote this kind of farming because it is very sustainable and to ensure that uh, our farmers you know improve in terms of uh, uh, productivity and in view of uh, uh, climate change so i tend to believe that the government has a role to play in terms of policy you know formulation and ensuring that uh, you know the the, the 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 policies you know um uh, uh, sustainable in terms of promoting you know the conservation uh, uh, farming uh, agriculture but um you know have you been in contact with the current government to uh, discuss this formulation of this policy that will make this type of farming friendly to every every, every citizen such as me I think for me, I'm, um, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming, you know, on the middle, you know, uh, middle management as a deputy regional um, manager now involved in two consultants, providing consultants. I believe there are other stakeholders, our CEOs, our managers, and uh, I mean, senior managers and other, you know, stakeholders who, who who have done that. I think I can't speak on their behalf, but that is the right way because I believe that uh, the new government should know where we are coming from in terms of the promotion of this technology and where we are and then we need if we do that then we'll be able to create an environment where the the the, the government will be able to know our shortcomings you know as you know organizations that has been supporting you know this kind of um, um, uh, technology 
Very well understood. Um, let's talk about Zambia as a whole. Mm. We have bigger famine, we have agri famine. I know I, I, I did explain to you my background in terms oh, of yes. farming, where mm. I come from and uh, how I reached here. But um, uh, our question is, how fertile or fruitful is Zambia's type of soil for this type of farming? You know, or um, rather, maybe before you ask yes. that, what type of farming do you think suits our economy as of now? Forget about climate change. Yes. Let's talk about our economy as mm -hmm. a whole. Mm -hmm. What type of farming should we be into? Because a lot of people will tell you, Mbozi, mm -hmm. um, they will say Ngombe, mm -hmm. um, they will say Mbozi, yeah. they will say pigs, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's yeah, agri, yeah. that's uh, yes. figury, that's... Yes. But then... Um, how how much do you support this type of farming? You know, um, we are so much blessed to hope to hope as a as, as a country. You know, uh, Zambia. We have um, uh, even if we have challenges of climate change, like you put it, but we are favorable land. We have plenty of water, and um, yeah, the climate you know is favorable in certain areas where certain. Um, what areas are those? Um, in areas of horticulture, you know, most of our farmers can go into horticulture, growing vegetables, and they are doing that growing vegetables and so on and so forth you know piggery like you put it and also poultry and so on so all these are viable you know Dr. kind Blythe. of um, uh, businesses Sorry. Mm. it seems like we're arguing but i just want to <laughs> cut you short because i'm invested in this oh type yes of, uh, ag agro farming oh yes you spoke about hot cuts do you know that a lot of our farmers mm -hmm. are using uh, irrigation systems mm -hmm. and not our natural circles mm -hmm. yes. for vegetables and yes. tomatoes and yes. all that? Mm -hmm. But you are sitting here mm -hmm. making it seem like, mm -hmm. no, in full idea, everything mm -hmm. is okay. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, everything is not okay. This is why I mentioned earlier on to say we are promoting climate smart agriculture. Climate uh, uh, smart agriculture is a broader term where even conservation farming is involved in. You know, and you've brought up, you know, other interventions like horticulture, piggery, and so on. All these are within the context of climate smart agriculture. We are promoting the usage of drip, drippers, you understand? Because we don't have enough water that we can waste this time around. But how many Zambian youths can afford the drip irrigation system? So what we are saying is that um, farmers can start small. You understand? Farmers can start small. We can't all start on that bigger, you know, uh, kind of um, arrangement. We start small, you know, by watering, using cans and so on. Then you grow your business and so on. Because um, hope, what we are saying now is that our farmers should do um, uh, turn away from dependency syndrome. Where they will need everything from the government, they will need everything from donor agencies and so on, I mean, cooperating partners. We need to stand on our own and ensure that we take measures, you know, that will be able to bring sustainability and improve the quality of lives, you know, of our farmers and everyone that is involved in, in business. It could be bigger, it could be poultry, whatever it is. So we start small and improve. There are so many technologies that have come. Um, uh, 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 around in terms of proving, improving, you know, the agricultural sector. What are some of those technologies for us that do not know? Some of the technologies, like I mentioned, uh, one of them is to do with the drippers, uh, you know, drippers, new Israel, you know, technology, which is helping very, very well, you know, our farmers in, in terms of um, uh, 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 reduced, you know, kind of uh, uh, water uh, usage. We have other technologies, um, a hope, like uh, uh, instead of our farmers, you know, for a long time we've been used using 16 liter spray you know 16 liter spray you know maybe use it even at your farm spraying your animals and so on mm -hmm. you know we have uh, what we call ava plus you know um uh, and micron sprayers which will use um very little just five liter that it can go you know uh, so many hectares uh, and so on where even a woman like you you can use it uh, you understand because it's climate smart making things easier there are so many innovations that are coming on board and uh, we are talking about um uh, solar pumps, you understand? Solar pumps, instead okay. of using uh, 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 electricity and so on, farmers will diversify into those technologies and so on. So all these are climate smart kind of um, um, uh, technologies that are improving, you know, the agricultural sector here in Zambia. I know you so much. In, I've got like a whole bunch of maybe 20 questions on climate uh, change yes. here on my um Hypnosis, but I just wanted to find out before we get to that, you spoke about innovation, mm -hmm. and I know you have a thing for the youth of Zambia. Mm -hmm. So, 
what 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 percentage of the youth mm. do you think is actually involved mm. or interested in conservation mm. thank you so much um i hope we have very few um uh, youths that are involved why is it that and um um you know most of all the youth this is why we need to bring in you know awareness you know to to, to our youths and uh, what we did as conservation farming is that um, we we took an approach a training approach whereby we realized that most of the, the trainings that we've had, they were women and old people, oh, you understand? Old people who are tired, you understand? So to, for us to bring in you know, the youth as well, we had to ensure that um, we make the trainings that uh, we, 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 we used to have in all these communities attractive to the youths by having role plays. You know, youths are very energetic. They need something that is interest, interesting and so on. So we had to incorporate in our training role plays, you know, whereby our, our youths are involved and so on, you know, making it interesting and so on and so forth. So you discover that um, about um, uh, for the trainings that we had from 2016 to 2021, 48% were women. You understand? We are women. And the 1%, the disabled. Because what we are saying is that um, we shouldn't leave anyone behind. Why is it that 48% were women? What happened to the men? Yeah, the, the larger percentage were, were men. Yeah, 48 women, and then uh, the other percentage remaining, you know... Um, um, the physically challenged, 1%, 1%. Yeah. then 48%. Yeah, 48%. In fact, the larger percentage were women involved. One thing I can mention about you women is that uh, you easily adopt, you easily understand things. You understand? Even in the Bible, you discover that um, women supported Jesus Christ very much up to the, the grave, even the resurrection. They were the ones who announced the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In most of these trainings that we've had, we've seen a number of women, you know, involved in this kind of project. And the, a lot of the, uh, adopters, in fact, the larger percentage of adopters, like I mentioned, 48% are women and so on. So now we need a lot of work. You know, um, uh, talking about organizations uh, that are involved in this scaling up in terms of uh, promotion of a smart kind of agriculture. We need a lot of sensitization to our youths. Hope, we are saying there are no jobs. You understand? And youths need jobs. But most That's of them... That's because we expect government to To provide... Everybody, it, which is... Yeah. Not, which is... Which, yes. It can't happen. It can't happen, you know. But one of the major employers... You know, agriculture is one of the major employers that can employ our youths, you know, in, in horticulture, vegetable growing, in uh, um, uh, other major uh, uh, growing of crops Maybe and so on. Do, uh, Dr. Blair, mm. sorry to cut you short, yes. uh, before I forget this point yes, that the people's concern. Uh, you spoke about awareness and trainings. I know government, past and present, mm. has been encouraging us, the youths, yes. to form cooperatives. Mm. To say, form a cooperative, mm. come up with something, will support you as, um, as the government. So um, in terms of when it comes to conservation farming, which mm -hmm. is agro and piggery farming, those, any yeah. type of farming, how has been government's um, response to this type of cooperative? Um, I may not be too sure, you know, with the interventions that uh, the government uh, has taken, um, I mean, I mean to, to, you know, cooperatives or the youths uh, uh, and so on, in, in particular, uh, and so on. But um, mainly, we've seen the government encouraging, you know, the youths to, to form, you know, um, uh, cooperatives. I've seen so many of the women that are involved in cooperatives, but I haven't seen much of the cooperatives with the youths, you know, in the areas that have uh, operated in and haven't had any interactions with such kind of uh, uh, cooperatives. I believe this is now when most of the youths now they are realizing the essence of coming together. So does together. this mean there's no emphasis on this type of cooperatives? The, the emphasis is there. We, we are making the emphasis. Through and word the, of mouth. Through word of mouth and the other organizations. But what impact. are you doing as an expert mm -hmm. who comes from running an organization, an mm -hmm. independent yes. uh, donor-funded organization, mm -hmm. to um, advocate for this project where the youths mm -hmm. actually form, we the youths, from yes. cooperatives mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. this type of farming? Thank you, Hope. You know, as conservation farming, we are experts in conservation farming. And uh, our role is to ensure that uh, every farmer adopts at every level in terms of women, youths, and so on. And we've done that through our various um, um, uh, part I mean, uh, uh, approaches. The other thing that you need to... to but don't you think it's your job to relay whatever mm -hmm. you see to government so that government can know what's going on? Because 
they cannot be everywhere. Yes. It's your job to yes. tell them to say, yes. this is what the youth want in mm -hmm. terms of farming, mm -hmm. and this is what you need to do. And so where your, is the communication of breakdown? For your own information, we do not work in isolation. Like I said, we are experts in the promotion of conservation, but there are other players that are directly involved with the youth that we work together with. The Minister of Agriculture, the youth, and so on, at district level, or community level, and so on. So what about all these, national level? What even at national for? level, even at national level, yes, even at national level, we collaborate in all these aspects. But one thing that I can uh, also mention, um, uh, hope is that uh, agriculture is a big, you know, uh, kind of uh, arrangement. We are talking of uh, um, agro dealers as well. So you see, youths are managing this agro. Mm -hmm. They may not be necessarily involved in um, agriculture or, or, or per se, but they are in agro. Um, a business, you know, supplying the inputs and um, all the necessities, you know, to, 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 to these farmers as well. And um, for your own information, like in our system that we've used, the model, you know, or approach that we've used in reaching out, you know, to, to various communities, we have youths that are involved as farmer coordinators. You know, these are farmers within those lo localities, communities where farmers are. These are farmer coordinators. They lead farmer structure who will train even other, uh, you know, farmers. So for us to ensure that we involve the youths in this kind of arrangement, working together with other partners, because this battle cannot be fought by one organization on its own. We ensure that we incorporate women, we incorporate youths, we incorporate men and everyone, you know, in this kind of uh, structure. I think um, looking at your incorporation, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago we had a cooperative. Oh, yes. Uh, SME cooperative. They mm -hmm. spoke about their challenges and mm -hmm. their benefits, and we tried to get the minister here. We couldn't, obviously, because he had other equally important yes, engagements. Yes. But um, as the people's concern, we want to know how has been the response from government when you try to engage them in what we, the youths, are going through in terms of farming. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, the government is always willing, you know, to, to help out, you know, our, fam uh, our youths, you know, out there. But one thing that I can mention also, policies are there. We've done a lot of talking, you understand? Meetings here and there, every government that comes on board, you know, they host meetings. Just last week, I think, we had a, a meeting where uh, youths from all over the country, you know, came and shared their views or their concerns and so on, which is a good thing. But there's one thing that is missing in this country. And that is about implementation. You understand? Implementation. Don't you think it's more about communication from the stakeholders to the youth? The, the communication is there. Because the same meetings that I'm talking about has to do with communication. Because these youths are there. They communicate their concerns, what they want and so on. And the government listens and even provides solutions. Okay, young men, you can do ABCD, form cooperatives and so on. So if the youth now form cooperatives, what do they get from there? You, you understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll be waiting. There'll be no any support in terms of capital, you know, to start, um, you know, whatever they want to do. But one thing that I can mention, uh, hope, is that uh, these are challenges that are facing every one of us. And we are the solutions to these challenges, uh, hope. We can't wait for the government to do everything for us. You understand? Zambia is big. For example, Bulaya, I have a challenge in my home. I have no money to send my children to school. You know, there is what we call job and work. You, let me explain briefly. There is what we call job and work. The floor is yours. Come on. We invited you here. You, <laughs> the floor is yours. Job. I'm no longer deputy regional manager for conservation <laughs> farming unity. You understand? I'm no longer having that position. You understand? And we are listening as the people's concern. Your people's because concern. We, we want you to explain this <laughs> yes. so we can understand it. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm no longer holding that position. You understand? But you invited me. What am I doing here? It's work. You understand? I would have said, oh, I can't come there because I will not get any salary, you know, from, you know, doing all these kind of um, uh, meetings and so on. I've had so many radio shows, you know, in Kawe, newspaper, I'm always uh, every week, you know, mass newspaper and so on. You know, work is what is embedded in you. It is what God made you to be. Somebody can take away your job. No, not, you know, somebody can take away your job. No one will take away your work. You understand? No one will take away. Or rather, my passion. Your passion. You understand? Remember, you know? before, uh, sorry, viewers, but uh, before we started this interview, I yeah. told you what I'm involved in. Oh, yes. Apart from me being here. Yes. So I'm also passionate about farming. <coughs> Excuse me. Excellent. This is what we need. Uh, you understand? I hope. This is what we need. So, what we are saying is that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, let's start small. 
Instead of dependency syndrome, we oh, wait, 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 wait until Jesus Christ comes. You understand? So the government our cannot men, employ all of cannot us. Cannot employ anyone. <coughs> Excuse me, this is interesting now. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> so now, what we are saying is that uh, let's start small. Let's start where we are. You know, as families, as youths, let's start where we are. So it has to do with our, our, our passions, like you put it, the vision that we have. You start small. You know, for me to reach the level where I am, I was a security guard. You understand? In grade 12, I was a security guard. You know, I was working for a security company. When I was writing the exams, you know, for grade 12, I was a security guard. I wanted to work. My parents were no more, you know, that time. My mother and my stepfather were in the village. They couldn't manage to support me, you understand? But I worked as a security guard, you know, so that I'm able to push myself to the next level. But today I'm a doctor. You understand, uh, Hope? I'm a doctor and I have so many qualifications, you understand? This is what we need to impart into our youth. Instead of waiting, do something. You have work to do. Do some piecework somewhere else. Do some piecework. Do some gardening and so on. From that small... That's why I love my Jesus. Um, I'm a pastor, by the way. Okay. That's the why I love Jesus. <laughs> you understand? Because the Bible says, do not despise your small beginning. You understand? Speaking of small beginnings, yes. I'll get you there. Let's talk about <laughs> fertilizer coupons. Come on. Uh, uh, when it comes to piggery, poultry, and cattle, mm -hmm. how are we doing? Is the government giving us any coupons? I know we have FRA that uh, deals with fertilizers and farmers, but coupons, are uh, all our skill, uh, small scale farmers getting any types of coupons? Um, I don't remember. Maybe other experts will be able to or guide me. Uh, this time, those coupons, I think, we had done a long time ago. You but know, they used to be there. They used to be there. Take us through the time when they were there. They were there. Those coupons were there. And it was like a subsidy, you know, the government supporting, you know, the farmers and so on in that kind of um, arrangement. But so whose regime changed. are we talking about? When um, we, I think we are talking of a Kaunda a, a, a regime. Yeah. I don't know the Chiluba regime if there was that kind um, of but arrangement. You were there. Yeah, I was there, but uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I was there. I'm 51 years old. Yeah. Oh. You were there. So take us through. I'm, 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 I'm a 21st. Uh, Come on. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's take us. Because yeah. we want to understand yes. where we are coming from in terms yes. of farming. Yeah. That's why I keep asking this question. Uh, yeah, that's very true. You know, that time, you know, most of the farmers were dependent on the government. So the government had a lot of arrangements in terms of coupon, subsidies, here and there. But times has changed. You know, the time where we are now is the time where farmers should stand on their own. When you look at the FISIP, you know, the FISIP was, uh, was uh, the arrangement, I think, was such a way that uh, maybe within We're three still years... still on coupons before you get to FISIP. Yes. You know, uh, yeah, you know, farmers could be wind. Uh, you Take know, us and so back on. to coupons. For coupons, yeah, come. for coupons. Those coupons were a kind of arrangement, you know, where uh, farmers were supported, you know, in terms of uh, subsidies, the government supporting the farmers in terms of fertilizer, the government supporting Supporting the farmers in terms of uh, maybe the farmer bringing you know their crops to to food reserve agency and uh, uh, food res reserve agency will raise those coupons to you know uh, to to those farmers and at the right time they go to the bank and they are paid. Those arrangements were there, but uh, things have changed. So what, not... what 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 changed between that time and now? What changed? Since you say you are fifty one, mm -hmm. you've seen through this process. Mm -hmm. What changed? Where did we go wrong as far mm -hmm. or where did government wrong? Because it's we're supposed to be advocating for these things. For these things. You know, this time around, we are looking at the economy, you know, where we are. Things were better that time, and things have become worse in terms of, uh, uh, I may not be an expert to explain properly, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the population, people that are involved into farming, people that are involved into various, you know, categories of um, uh, value uh, uh, chains, you know, in this um, uh, country. So now, this time around, I believe that even for um, uh, farmers to do anything, they have to do their part. They have to play their role. You understand? They have to play their role. In terms of making commitment, you know, if it's farming, you know, a bigger, you have to make a commitment. This time around, you know, if you look at, I'm um, giving an a, a example of the, that time, because most of these big farmers were even getting uh, a fertilizer on um, a credit. 
and so on. Where we is no longer he? do that now. With no, where parents. is the Lima Bank? Where is the Lima Bank? Where is he, those uh, uh, organizations? We should be asking you that question. You they are gone. That time. They are gone. You know, all those organizations were gone because the farmers were not paying back. You understand? The farmers were not paying back. So this is why we are saying to say things have changed. And we need to change, you know, our mindset. Instead of depending fully upon the government to do everything, we need to arise. You understand? We need to arise and make a commitment. You know, if the government comes in, it will be just a kind of supplementary, you know, kind of uh, support. Mm. All right. <laughs> Hit <laughs> a debate, I must say. <laughs> Come on. Yes, please. Yes, please. Now, speaking of uh, challenges, uh, yes. in order for us to overcome uh, mm -hmm. these uh, steps, uh, what should the government and us young farmers do so that we can meet on your mutual ground before we come to uh, climate change in details? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are so many, you know, um, uh, challenges or gaps, you know, that are there. But I believe that um, what we need to do is um, information, you know, um, uh, giving information, you know, to... Because, you know, Zambia is not only in Lusaka. Zambia is not only on the Copper Belt or in towns, for instance. You know, there are the remotest areas. There are youths in the remotest areas. There are farmers in the remotest areas. So we need to ensure that um, we relay this information. You know, we have, you know, um, um, kind of arrangement, organizations and other stakeholders, you know, taking key interest, you know, in sharing this information to our youths, to all men, to everyone, you know, in the remotest area. Um, hope, this is my interest. This is my passion. I'm looking smart here, putting on a tie because I've come but to don't you think the radio you, station, even TV you, station. Even you uh, stakeholders are wrong in a way because you mm, come on TV, mm -hmm, you go on radio. Mm -hmm. But... How much of field work do you actually do to go and speak to these farmers in dollar in, in dollar rural yes. or rural? Thank you for that. How question. much or how many times do you actually go? You know, I've worked in the farming community for your own information for twenty years. I started my work in nineteen ninety six. You know, with um, maybe you were not born by then. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, Lonro, you know, that time I worked for five years, went into Bible school, and uh, later on um, I, I joined a conservation farming unity in 2007. Uh, no, but besides your background, how much of actual field work? Uh, this in is politics, why they say background. This is why how I, much of background do you do? Yes, as this is why I've start, uh, I'm starting giving you a background where I'm starting from. And uh, I've spent all these 20 years working in the rural areas in the remotest areas with farmers. These interventions that we have, like Conservation Farming Unity, they are, these interventions are carried out in the remotest areas, in the rural areas, uh, uh, for your own information. And uh, it's not only for CFU, the Minister of Agriculture, we have extension officers that are based in the remotest areas, and so on. So all these interventions are being, take, I mean, uh, uh, are being taken, you know, even in those uh, uh, areas. But this education that's going on in the rural areas, yes. are our farmers actually understanding? Yes, because um, what it is, is that um, when we are doing the facilitation, it is not like we are in universities, we are in colleges. No, we bring it to the level where our farmers will be able to understand the technology. Remember, I mentioned to say the kind of approach that we have, the facilitation, is a participatory kind of, uh, uh, when we are doing the training, most of the extension of this participatory kind of um, approach. And we do even role plays. The essence of these role plays is to bring the message to the level where farmers are. Yes. This debate will never end because <laughs> you have your belief, I have my belief, but yes. uh, production says we have less than 10 minutes. Oh, great. So now uh, let's come to climate change. So mm -hmm. what are the main principles of conservation farming? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Hope. There are three, you know, major principles of conservation farming. Number one is minimum tillage. You know, when you do... Explain it in terms where exactly. even I can understand. You understand. Eh? You are a bigger farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum tillage, we mean, you know, farmers, you know, um, maintaining, you know, um, a permanent um, a basins. These basins, you know, are dug. You know, the farmers dig, you know, um, are, are basins, you know. There are specific specifications, 30 meters long, 30 centimeters long, 30 centimeters, uh, 15 centimeters wide, and 15 centimeters deep. And there are specifications, specifications mm -hmm. that um, we train our farmers from one, uh, from one, 
uh, uh, basin to the other about 70 you know uh, centimeters and interro 90 centimeters and so on you know and um, and uh, this is what we refer to as minimum tillage instead of overall plowing farmers should just concentrate where they will do the planting so now we have different categories of farmers those that are using now um, uh, oxen they are oxen yeah? uh, reapers that they use you know a, a an ox will be a, oxen will be able to um, uh, uh, you know push or pull i mean you know the reaper we have also a uh, tractor drone you know uh, reapers for those that have tractors they can use tractor uh, drone reapers that have also specifications and so on so this is what we call minimum tillage it is permanent permanent you know kind of arrangement that um, uh, farmers uh, do this kind of technology for whole farmers ox uh, farmers and also those who are, who are mechanized using uh, tractors then the other principle is um, crop rotation hope Farmers should crop, crop rotate instead of monocropping. Every year it's maize. Every year it's maize. You know, maize is a heavy feeder. So, so excellent. This is the way to go. Our farmers should crop, uh, crop, you know, rotate. Meaning, if you are growing soya beans, you are growing pigeon pea, you are growing groundnuts, you are adding, you know, fertility. Yeah, but I think yeah. speaking for the youth, there's a lot of youths that will tell you amatabayali chipa poku biala than soya beans than wheat. But than uh, but uh, you know maize is so involving. A farmer will grow will go for maize, but, but they cheaper. don't have they don't have fertilizer. It's expensive. They don't have fertilizer. You know. It's they cheaper don't have to buy. Price. It's cheaper to buy and than, than yes yes then for, it for will sure. Survive on its yes own. for sure. So what we encourage our farmers is that. Um, even if maize is our uh, 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 main, you know, crop, yes, they can grow maize. But, you know, we, we, we are preaching diversification because of these changes, you know, of weather. So our farmers should learn to grow different kinds of uh, crops. The other thing is that uh, our farmers should also learn to keep residues. Filetia Ashala. You know, when you clean your field, you weed your field, you know, the stover and so on, let it remain in the field because it will help out to maintain or regulate, you know, um, uh, uh, soil, you know, um, uh, temperatures and so on. I think on. I know we're on TV, but there's something I learned, uh, you know, is it uh, chicken, chicken droplets? Yes. It also feeds fish. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I for think sure. that's something that we need to teach people. Yes, yes, we can go that way because this is a circle. We have farmers that are, uh, uh, even the, the droplets, you know, they can even be used as manure, you know, for these crops that we are talking about. So these things are beneficial to our farmers. So let's diversify. The message here is that uh, in this climate change where we are, our youths, our men, and our women, it is essential to diversify. All right. So, you know, when I put my, my notepad down, we are winding up. Before uh, yes. I ask you that uh, general, the, there's, there's the last part of the program, which mm -hmm. is our general question. Mm -hmm. You pass it or you fail it, that's up to you. But benefits and disadvantages of conservation farming? The benefits are numerous. You know, the benefits are numerous in terms of uh, uh, increasing, you know, productivity. This is where we are now. This is the message the government is preaching. This is the message the world is preaching. Hope we have what we are calling um, uh, 17 SDGs, this is Sustainable Development Goals, you know, uh, 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 goals and uh, uh, 2030 envision where we are pro preaching, you know, um, 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 every country, you know, has a role to ensure that uh, uh, we, we meet these, uh, you know, uh, uh, goals and so on. And one major goal is on a uh, climate, uh, you know, action and so on and so forth. So, you know, the benefits are many. You know, the disadvantage is that farmers had initially was to do when they are doing a con uh, conservation farming was to do with weed pressure. You know, was to do with weed pressure. But this time around, you know, with uh, other technologies that have come on board in terms of helping our farmers, this time around, uh, hope you can be as big as you are as a farmer and enjoying your farming business in the rain season. You know, you will never go weary. You know, you will be strong all the time because you just use weed killers, you know, that um, will be able to su uh, suppress or uh, get rid of, you know, the weeds. So these were disadvantages earlier on, but there are so many advantages advantages that have come on board to help our farmers. You can give us two. Yeah, like um, um, uh, uh, with um, uh, management and so on. Also, we have uh, mechanizations, like I mentioned earlier on, you know, where our farmers, if they don't have any means, they'll just use a tractor, you know, to do reaping and so on and so forth. Cut on, or cut off time and cut off, you know, uh, other costs that are associated, you know, with conventional kind of farming. 
Wow, <laughs> it's been interesting. Me and Dr. Vulaya can go on and on and on about conservation farming, but I have to cut him short because we are coming to the end of the program. I'm going to ask you a general question. Mm -hmm. You have been there for 51 years. Mm -hmm. What's your greatest memory of our late president, Arabi? Arabi, thank you so much for, for that question. He was a unifier. You know, this is one thing that I've known about him. He was not um, self-centered, you know, and um, he's a very good example of leadership principles. You know, we are there just for a while. And as a leader, you need to pass on the mantle. You, you understand? So in the politics, this is what we hear to say, power is sweet. But it's a very good example of a leader who understands that when it is time, you let go and let others take, take it up. And look at how he unified the country in terms of uh, you know, the transition that uh, we had. So I believe he's a good man and uh, may he so rest in peace. And all of us who are aspiring to be leaders, I think that is the good example. You have that aspirations we can to be president one day? No, not a president, but I can be an MP. I can save my people. Which and you know where I can save? Which constituency? I can go are we in the rural at? area and save which, the people in the tell rural us, areas. Which constituency? Because I'm a potential voter. Come so on. which constituency are we looking at? I'm not at? decided yet, but I'll tell you at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> but your last word to the young farmers like me. Young farmers and uh, all my farmers that are listening, you know, to me, farming is business. And uh, for our young men and women, let's try it. You know, there's good examples of young women, you know, who are doing uh, very well in terms of farming here in Zambia. Let's learn from them. You know, um, um, uh, you need to be a boss on your own and farming can make you to be a boss on your own. So let's try farming and every one of us, let's take action against uh, uh, climate change. Wow. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ulaya, for coming through. And uh, this has been The People's Concern with me, Hope Musonda. Join me on Thursday as we host Dr. Alex from the Democratic Party. Have a lovely evening, and thank you very much for watching Revelation TV Zambia. Thank you, thank you so much.